Okay guys, so in this video we are going to talk a little bit about node security. So let's get into it. Now I had a question by one of my viewers or well, basically the question was if I could talk a little bit about the, the issues with no security and why some people claim that there is a big security problem with not just Node but NPM in general and open source and so forth. And although this is a very big topic and it is an ongoing problem that the community is trying to solve, I wanted to just show you kind of one of the root problems that may help you understand what the fundamental issues are. So let's like have a look at that. So first and foremost, you may have heard that Node has, has certain security issues. And the fact is that there is actually some truth to this. And the underlying problem is that whenever you are installing a NPM package or Node, like a dependency of some sort, you have no guarantees what that code is going to do if you try to execute it. Now, that is one part of the problem, but you can actually have issues where people can hide malicious code in packages and can, they can actually, because the way Node works, start to do some very scary things on your local machine. And I, won't, I wanted to just show you a, a very basic example of this. There are more advanced ways that you can exploit a system use leveraging these system, this, the method that I'm going to show you. But I wanted to just touch on the bare bone basics first and foremost. So I have this little package that I've created here. We can look at my package JSON. It has like uh, basically no dependencies, just this plain old package. But the magic part is this thing here, which is what we call like a install a pre-install hook. Basically, the way that npm works is that I can actually declare as a package provider so-called lifecycle hooks or things that I want to be executed or scripts that I want to be executed as part of different th different parts of the installation process. And a pre-install hook, all that's going to do is that it's going to allow me to set a command that I want to run as part of the pre-install. In other words, when you are installing my package. Now, this little script here that I've made is a very simple one where I'm basically just using sudo directly and then trying to invoke the script. But you can make more, you know, you can of course make this much more advanced. Let's just look at what is gonna, what's going to happen here. So here I am in my little project here and I'm going to install this package. So what's going to happen now is that basically all I did, what I did was to install the package that is in npm. And as you can notice here, I had some log output. And the process hasn't died yet. The reason why that hasn't died yet, we'll look at that in just a moment. But in essence, what I've done now is that I have exploited the system. Now, I can fork off this process into a separate thread and stuff of this nature to make this even harder to detect. But because I, as a consumer of this package, just blindly installed it, you can see here in the log output that I actually invoked a script as part of the installation process. And I can only say that this is actually extremely dangerous because now I can do things like this. So I can do, say, I wanted to grab the working directory that my little script here is running in. Now I can actually get the log output of that. Maybe I wanted to see what files are on the compromised system. I can even traverse the file system. I can execute commands. And depending on how much of a mistake the person installing this has actually made and how elaborate my, elaborate my exploit is, I can actually do some serious damage. At the very least, I can do things that doesn't require me to be a super user. And that's one of the biggest learnings I want you to take away from this. Never, ever, ever run as this, the root user when you're using code that you're not like that you can't trust and I will even go one further but we'll talk about that just in just a moment let's just look at this little script of mine so let's have a look here at this so this is my little script all I'm doing is that I'm basically grabbing the HTTP library um, module from node and then I have my execute sync, exec sync function here, which is coming from the child process, which allows me to just run an arbitrary command, or a command, if you will. And basically all I'm doing is that, hey, I'm gonna make a network request. In this case, I actually have hard-coded the 
like because I'm just running this on my local computer. But there's nothing stopping me from making a network request to a service that will tell me the host's uh, IP, uh, like public IP address and grab the IP address first, send that to a client server somewhere that I'm running with that information, and then I can basically run run the command after that so I can actually know which uh, like what to contact well you know basically figuring out what the, figuring out the IP address of the compromised system isn't isn't all that hard and here I would simply put input my own little secret IP address that I have somewhere where my server is running so just to walk through this what's gonna happen is that I'm gonna execute in this case, it's just going to be print working directory. I'm going to grab the output from that, base64 encode it, and then basically just send it as part, make a network request with the base64 encoded string. And on my client server of things, all I have is a little file, like a little server, a node server, that's just going to grab the URL of the person, like the person making the request in this case, and then I'm going to just uh, de like uh, uh, unencode or decode the base64 string into UTF UTF8 and log out the data. That's about it, really. I, you know, that there's nothing much more to it. So, and then, of course, I swallow exceptions and stuff of this nature just to kind of hide if something goes wrong. Now, this is the big, like the probably the simplest thing I can do. I, and you know, I can make this script a lot more elaborate and do some and figure out quite a lot of, about the system. Or I could, you know, I could do something more, much more dangerous. If, as I said, if I have, if the user who's executing the the script has root access, I can basically do whatever I want. And in this, like just to, for demo purposes, here I'm spinning up a small little node server and allowing the, the well basically just running a process with the server listening and well I'm just listening on port 3000 in this case but I could listen on other ports as well and just I could scan in theory I could scan the open ports on the host and figure out which like what ports are open if I can have anything use something that's free stuff of this nature and this basically works on the same principle as you saw earlier all it's going to do is that it's going to take in a the command that I send as part of the request uh, and assume that it's base64 encoded um, decode it and then simply execute the script grab the result and then respond with whatever the result of executing that command and this running in this running process, like what the output was of doing that. And my little client script here, just for completeness sake, it, all it does is that it it simply is a convenience method for me to construct the URL. As I said here, in this case, I already know what my compromised host is going to be named just because I wanted to show you for demo purposes. But if in a real, if I had done this for real, the first thing I would have done with my little script here was to send the IP address of the compromised host to some of one of my client server. So I could actually have this instead of just assuming it being hard, like this. And yeah, and then I basically grab the input to my little script here and encode it and then we basically yeah then we simply do a, a get call with the data and log out the response so this is like a very naive and very simple kind of like low level attempt at compromising a system and it's not i mean this is not something like the people who invest time in making a really good implementation of a malicious script is going to put a lot more effort into this than i did i just want to show you the basic idea of this and so we can take a few key things away from this. So the first and foremost, like these are just a few examples of things that you should keep with you when you are working with node packages. So first and foremost, never run a node, uh, no, never run a node process as the, as the root user. It is very dangerous if there is a compromised package in your dependencies because remember, you don't have to personally install a package that might be compromised. All that is required for this to be a possible attack area, attack surface, is for any of the packages that are included in any of your dependencies to be compromised. It could be the smallest, tiniest little library that is part of, well, 
React like, or like Angular or Vue or whichever pack, like whatever dependencies you have. In theory, it could be absolutely anyone depending on anything. So remember that. Only depend on well-maintained packages from trusted sources, you know, so that you make sure that the code that you are depending on is coming from someone who you can trust. And hopefully even they are, like, they should themselves also make sure that whatever they are depending on is coming from a trusted source. And if you can, run your node code in an isolated environment. In other words, it's not a good idea. I mean, if you have a distributed system or something like that with sensitive information or like a production environment, you should not run your node process together with a lot of other sensitive, in a, like a, like in a type of mainframe situation or some sort of just computer with other sensitive sensitive information. Try to isolate it so that the process is only able to like communicate or contact anything that you know. Just make sure that your node process is isolated so that it doesn't so that a malicious user can't like get access to sensitive information just from you running the script. So using containers something like docker or this or this this nature is a pretty that's a good safety net to have with you. Limit network communication in other words don't you know just allow arbitrary network calls to go out or to come in make sure that you're not exposing unnecessary ports so that you know so no one can like just hide a by basically a backdoor into your system things of this nature and try to monitor network traffic so that no weird communication is happening on your system that you're not that shouldn't be happening in the first place now these are just a few basic examples there are tons of other things that you should consider but i just wanted to show you that there is actually some validity to the security issues and this is not exclusive to npm or node it kind of comes with the problem of open source because open source means that well it doesn't necessarily mean that but as a community of open source contributors it's very like it's extremely hard to figure out what is compromised and what can be trusted and when everybody is installing these packages left and right it's actually much easier for an attacker to get malicious code into other people's projects so all i want to is to make sure that you are aware of that there are some healthy things that you should look out for and make sure that you're only depending on things that you can trust have a great day